Welcome back to my channel. And today we are diving into an, an essential topic, the five key principles of the nervous system retraining for pain relief. And many of us experience the pain and then often believe that it is due to damage or injury. And what, what if I told you that by understanding these principles, and you can change your relationship with your pain. So let's explore how these principles and can empower you to take control of your healing process. Have you ever wondered if your pain is actually a protective response from your nervous system? So let's find out together. If what we covered today resonates with you, and be sure to check out my free masterclass where I go deeper into these principles and then show you how to apply them and for lasting pain relief. And you will find the link in the description and in the comments below. The first principle is safety and the trust. Our nervous system needs to feel safe in order to release tension and allow movement. And when we are in a state of fear or anxiety and our bodies tighten up and reinforcing the pain patterns, so how do we bring more safety into the body and how do you apply this principle into the movement retraining and the nervous system retraining? And so recognizing your own, uh, your habitual patterns, your posture patterns and breathing patterns and movement patterns, for example, Maybe this is your habitual patterns in a, in, in a state of fear and anxiety that you, uh, you are more flexed, right? More rounded. And, and it is okay. Instead of trying to move yourself into an, an extension, when well, that's a fixing and that's a correction, and basically imposing that correction onto your, onto your body is really increasing a threat into your nervous system. So the habitual patterns is basically a place of uh, place that your nervous system knows quite well. So give yourself a permission to be in your habitual pattern, whether it is in a flex patterns, whether it is a shifted in one place or another place, and recognize it and then give yourself permission that it's okay to be in the habitual pattern. That's okay. So if it is, in fact, if uh, flexed pattern is your habitual patterns and then not only give yourself permission but you can also move further into the habitual pattern so it's just more flexion that's okay just let yourself know that there's nothing wrong with that in fact staying in the habitual pattern and gives um, more comfort and safety to the nervous system by doing that, you're actually removing the fear and then anxiety. And it really allows your nervous system and to move and or the nervous system allows you to move out of uh, your habitual patterns. If you're trying to force and trying to correct your body and move into another place right away, most likely your nervous system is going to resist, which is basically you're going to increase the same habitual patterns even more. So you're going to stiffen more, your breathing becomes more compromised, not really helpful. Give yourself permission to be in a habitual patterns. Stay there, you move even further into the patterns so that your nervous system actually feels safe and then let you move out of that pattern then you can actually start to explore and move into a different place so that's the first one the second principle is awareness through movement by tuning into our bodies and noticing how we move and we enhance our ability to change our movement patterns i'll give you an example uh, common movement pattern raising your shoulder like this so habitually as you raise your shoulder then you raise your um you raise your shoulder towards the ear so you elevate your ear uh, the elevate your shoulder towards the ear as you lift your arm overhead something like that so habitual patterns like this you raising lifting your arm is associated with anchoring the weight into your neck, anchoring to your neck muscles. 
So that's the patterns. And then maybe that is associated with tension in the neck and the pain in the neck. But by bringing your attention awareness into your body and you become aware that this is my habitual patterns. And then you can begin to actually do something different. So now instead of lifting your arm, anchoring your arm into your neck, but you can think about, okay, another way to do that is you can support the weight of your arm to your chest. And knowing that your chest and your mid back is also an, a support that can, you can support your arm, the weight of your arm from here as well, not only your neck, but actually instead of anchoring your weight of your arm into your neck, you can actually create the support from here, which has a much, much uh, stronger base. So you reorganize your structure underneath you, underneath your arm, so that you can raise your arm. Now it's a completely different way of moving, but by bringing your attention and awareness into how you move, and you can begin to change the way you move. You're changing the patterns. Now you do this movement. Now I don't feel quite as much of the uh, tension in my neck. It's actually, I can feel much more comfort doing this movements. I can raise my arm much more easily, more comfortably. And then I feel a lot more comfortable in my neck as well. Third is a whole body integration. Your body isn't just a collection of parts. It is an integrated system. Addressing the discomfort in one area and can possibly impact other areas. So, for example, you turn your head in a functional activities, you turn your head side to side. And then isolating the movement from your neck only, you can imagine how much more work in your neck, right? Very, very common uh, movement pattern for a lot of people who have a neck issues doing this, right? But as you bring your attention and an awareness, so this is related to the previous principle as well. And then you begin to understand your neck as a part of an integrated whole, meaning that neck is connected to the spine below, which is the mid back, thoracic spine, and then spine down below, which is the lumbar spine, which is connected to your pelvis, which is connected to your legs. So they're all connected, right? And then also it is connected to your clavicles, your collarbones, your sternum, and your ribs, your shoulders. As you start to include all the other parts in the image and the neck being part of this whole, with that image, then you think about turning your head to the right side, for example, visualize that it is actually it involves the whole body. It can include a lot more parts of yourself here. So you probably have done the lessons that I guide in other videos. A lot of lessons like this improve the neck movements because that is, you, you teach in your brain that other parts are part of your neck so that you can think about moving your entire torso and uh, your ribs, mid back, lower back, and the pelvis and the hips. Then the movement becomes a lot easier. So it's, the movement is quite a bit different. How that impacts your neck, your ability to move your head, and then an impact on your neck and the comfort around your neck, it does make a difference. And it is pretty obvious if you do try that. Right? And then the fourth principle is less is more. Gentle, mindful movements can often yield better results than an aggressive, forceful stretching, forcing the range of motion. And then I'll use a, a same example, head rotation, neck rotation here. So it's really not about if you feel limited, uh, if you have a limited range of motion of the neck, well, that's because 
you have been already overusing your neck and using your neck as an independent or isolated part of yourself rather than letting other parts and work with your neck. So how can you improve that? You might think that you need a stretching because this is stiff. This is limiting your range of motion. Therefore, you can't move and turn your head as far. And so you probably need to stretch it, uh, stretch some muscles, the tight muscles. Or you think that uh, maybe you need to massage or combination of both, right? And in order to improve your range of motion, maybe that's the case sometimes. Uh, but oftentimes, since the neck is already doing way too much work and improving the whole body connection and can improve. So again, this is related to the previous um, principle, but less is more. So you don't really need to do more in order to improve your range, which sounds very strange, but I'll show you exactly how that works. So do this one with me now. Uh, whether you have any uh, range of motion issues with your neck or not, it doesn't matter, right? And you can do a quick range of motion uh, testing, so to speak, and gently, very gently, turn your head to the right side. And I'm doing it very slowly if you watch me, right? Then I'm not really trying to go as far as I can, but I'm just really sensing how easily my head can turn to one direction. When the movement starts to become a little bit more difficult, then I know, okay, that's enough. And then I'll come back. So I'm just only going to the right side. And then I'll do a very simple movements um, <clears throat> that can help with that. So here, now you bring your attention to your right shoulder right here, right? Your, this is my right shoulder, so you can Bring your attention. You don't have to touch it, but feel free to touch it just so you know where is your right shoulder. Just teach your brain. And then you gently move your right shoulder backward directions. I'm not going that far. I'm moving only um, very, very tiny bit of range of motion here, backward here. And then come back to the start. Very simple movements, right? Moving the shoulder back, but very slowly. And then come back forward. Remember, less is more. Here's the challenge. A lot of us are so used to doing more and push through pain or discomfort or push to the, the absolute limit. And that's how you know that you are doing something good. But you have to let go of that mindset, right? No pain, no gain. Just get rid of that uh, for now. But think about less is more. This is a new one. This is a tough one for a lot of people who are not used to that. Less is more. So how, how little movement can you make? Very small movement, right? So feel how your shoulder is moving back. Okay? Very clear, your shoulder is moving back. So now, now you know the shoulder, and then you touch your clavicle, your collarbone, the right side here, which is connected to your shoulder right here, right? So as you move your right shoulder back, so feel the clavicle, your right clavicle moving back here with it. Well, obviously, it has to because it's connected, right? So once you sense that, that it becomes very clear to you, now, this is your collar, uh, excuse me, your sternum, your breastbone. So touch it, the top of it, the middle of it. Relationship here, this is connected to your clavicle, which is connected to your shoulder. So that is connected, right? So as you move your right shoulder back slightly, feel how your sternum is also turning like that. Feel that? And now, same time, Notice how this is also connected to your neck. So as you are moving your shoulder, they all begin to connect. And your neck is, you don't have to move your neck. You have to, all you have to do is let it move. You don't have to make it move because it will move, but it is connected. 
as you move your right shoulder back, and then you notice how your neck is spontaneously begin to turn. Not because you are voluntarily turning your head, but because you are allowing your head and neck to move, then that's all. You don't need a lot of force to do that. Less is more. And after you've done that, very simple exploration, and then you slowly turn your head to the right side. And then come back. Did that change the range of motion? Even though you did so little movements, but by bringing your attention to different parts of your body, and then the brain starts to recognize that how they are connected and related to each other. Then it begins to include these parts with your neck so that it can also turn very easy and very uh, more, uh, more range of motion without even trying harder. Why this is more is important is because you do make more effort then your nervous system, it goes to the automatic habitual patterns, which is then not really helping you because the habitual patterns are keeping you stuck in the same difficulties and the challenges. So if you want to change that, then you have to reduce your effort, move more slowly and slow at the smaller range so that you can bring your attention to your body and sense your body more clearly, and then you can begin to change the way you move, then movement becomes easier. So you improve your functions, improve your comfort. And the, finally, the last principle, the fifth principle we have is the neuroplasticity. The nervous system has the ability to adapt and change. And by introducing a new movement patterns, then we can rewire our brain's response to pain. So uh, all the things that examples that I gave you in the in the previous principles are basically based upon the brain's ability to change and adapt. The way to do that is bringing your attention into your body. And this is why learning from the inside is really the key. And you have to, uh, all the, uh, the principles that are covered, uh, one, two, three, four, is really about, uh, about to change your habitual patterns in the nervous system. You have to move slowly, so less is more. Um, then you have to, you don't want to force yourself you have to uh, you have to be very gentle with the movement practice, and you have to bring the safety into your body. So forcing uh, anything into your body is basically a threat to your nervous system. Not a good idea. And reinforcing the same patterns. So you are uh, trying to do more and pushing through pain. Well, that's not really helping. And that is bringing more uh, threat and danger to the nervous system, which creates more protective and pain patterns. Not helpful, right? Uh, so you want to change that, uh, the state of the nervous system by bringing a safety. And then by moving more slowly and through a smaller range, reducing an effort so that your nervous system can feel safe and then let you move and let you explore a different ways to move. And then when you start to find the different ways to move, then the brain has to find the different path. And right, if you move the body in the same ways, the brain has to use the same path that it's been using by finding, by exploring and different ways of moving, then the brain it starts to create a different path. And that's how you start to change the relationship, your relationship with your body. So in summary, and these five principles can transform your relationship with the pain and empower you to move with more ease and comfort. And I encourage you to practice these concepts in your daily life. 
If you are interested in diving deeper into this work and in learning how to retrain your nervous system and to overcome pain and limitations, I invite you to explore my deep work of the nervous system retraining and movement retraining. So please check out the link in the uh, description and in the comments to join my free masterclass where we will explore these concepts and principles and further and then help you rediscover the joy of moving freely. So if you find this video helpful and please like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.